Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a quick review of log returns and why we like to use log returns in finance. I'm going to give you two reasons why we like to use log returns and then show one drawback. To do that, I'll illustrate with this spreadsheet here that you can download from the website yourself if you'd like to experiment with different numbers. This is a simple three asset portfolio over three periods. So I've got asset A, B, and C and then a value for each of the three assets over three periods. Period one, period two, period three. So the price of asset A at the end of the first period is $100. Then it grows to $120 at the end of the second period. And then finally it grows again to $130 at the end of the third period. Three assets over three periods. And then here below we calculate the log returns. First, I've got the weight of the asset in the portfolio. So under these assumptions, the three assets have a total value or price of $350. So the weight of that first asset is about 29%. So here are the portfolio weights. They sum to 100%. And to calculate the log return, it's very straightforward. One of the reasons we like it, we take the natural log of the price at the end of period two in this case it's 120 dollars divided by the price in the prior period in this case 100 dollars so this here is the formula that cal calculates our one period log return it's the natural log of the price in period two divided by the price in period one and i can copy that forward to get the one period log return that runs from 120 to 130 dollars here and I calculate that down for all three assets as you can see as you can see the asset B had a negative 5.1 percent log return as 200 drops to 190 and finally I can also do it for the whole portfolio natural log of the portfolio price in period 2 divided by the price in period one and I can do it for the one period portfolio return from period two to period three is 10.1 percent now the two period log return similarly is the natural log I'm going to do it just for asset A of the price of asset A at the end of period three divided by the price at period one so now I've gone from period one to period three, so this is a two period log return, and it turns out to be 26.2%. And I can also do it for the portfolio. Okay, now here is the main reason why we like to use log returns in finance. It's because they are time additive, or another phrase for this is time consistent. What that means is, here I've got the two period log returns for each asset and for the total portfolio. Well, it turns out that is the same as adding the one period log returns. Notice all I'm here, I do, here I'm doing is adding the one period log returns and I get the same value that I got by taking the two period log return directly. And it's true also of the portfolio. So here, all of these values match all of these values. Here I have the two period log return calculated directly from period one to period three. And here I've added the one period log returns. And they are the same. This is the main reason we use log returns. They are time additive or time consistent. Also, the second desirable property is that if these log returns are normally distributed, which is a common assumption under short periods, then adding these normally distributed variables produces an end period log return that is also normally distributed. So in this case, our two period log return, we can assume, is normally distributed because we assumed our one period log returns are normally distributed. So that's the second advantage. Finally, I'll give you the one disadvantage to using log returns is that notice I have the portfolio weights at the beginning of the period here. If I take those portfolio weights 
and multiply each of them by the return, I get the sum of or the weighted portfolio return right here, 6%. As it's, this is 6% is just the asset A, its weight multiplied by its return plus the weight of asset B in the portfolio multiplied by its return, the weight of asset C multiplied by its return. So if we take the weighted average of the uh, component or asset returns, we get 6%, and that is not the same as the portfolio log return. So log returns are not a linear function of the component or asset weights. And you'll see in the spreadsheet that would be the case if we used the simple or discrete returns. If I go right down here with simple returns, which is a simple percent, the portfolio weighted return is the sum of the asset return or component returns. So that's the advantage of the simple returns over the law, uh, period log returns. I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.